Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer and acoustician based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Today I want to tell you guys why you might be wasting a lot of money by spending your money on rock wool, especially rock wool safe and sound insulation in your walls versus just spending it on the cheaper fiberglass insulation like Owens Corning Pink or John Manville insulation and why you'll get the same results by using cheaper insulation versus rock wool when doing a proper sound isolated wall. All right, if you're interested in this topic and you want to save some money on your next soundproof isolation build, then this is the place for you. Let's dive in. So the first thing I want to go over is just this article here by acoustics, uh, by woodworks.org. It's called a solutions, pa acoustic solutions paper. And it shows in a wood frame construction, the most effective wall in terms of acoustical performance is a double stud wall as shown in figure three right here. Uh, this wall can achieve a rating of approximately STC 63 when insulated with bat insulation and covered with two layers of gypsum wallboard on the outside face of the studs. Um, STC 63 is the highest rating possible. So this right here, and I'm going to show you this other diagram, which is one of my diagrams that's a little bit simpler here, uh, shows that we have cheap fiberglass insulation, a two by four stud wall, a one inch air gap, and then two layers of five eighths inch drywall on either side. And that gets you that STC rating of 63 right here. So that is the important thing to remember. Uh, and this is going to be the best quality wall system you can get. So I wanted to start with that, uh, regardless of the insulation that you're using. Now, let's go into Rockwell's specific website here, which shows a single layer, 5 8 inch gypsum board on each side of the wall here, a uh, regular two by four metal stud framing, and then three inch rock wool in the middle there. And that's gonna get you a sound transmission class of 52. So that's actually pretty good. Um, 52, just right there. Now let's look at the same diagram without rock wool, but with Owens Corning in the wall. And we can look at this guy right here. Uh, this is gonna be the same style of wall. Uh, single layer 5 8 inch type X drywall. Then we got a two by four steel stud wall with a uh, three and a half inch framing bat insulation. So just regular um, metal framing bat insulation by the Owens Corning Corporation. And that gives you an STC rating of 50. So also not too bad. Uh, the key thing here is that both walls have 5 8 inch drywall, not uh, half inch drywall. So if you look, for example, I think they show it here. Uh, half inch drywall gets you an STC rating of 51 there. And then this one gets you an STC rating of 52. So little differences there. But the real thing I wanted to show you is that the difference here is an STC rating of 50 versus an STC rating of 52. So really not much of a difference there when it comes to the STC ratings between the two walls with all things being roughly equal between the rock wool insulation versus regular pink insulation. So now let's go over here and say, let's, what's the difference between having an STC rating uh, of 50 versus 52? How much of a difference does two STC points make? Now let's figure that out. So in that same article by the Owens Corning Corporation, uh, they have they say, however, two or three points differences in STC ratings between constructions are not significant. The human ear cannot detect this difference. Specifiers should not assume that a partition with a higher STC value is functionally any better than a partition with a slightly lower one. So that kind of shows you, okay, maybe two STC points is not going to make a difference. Well, let's go even a step further and look at this uh, article by the soundproofing company, which I love Ted over here at the soundproofing company. He's He's got a lot of great articles and diagrams here. I will say I don't support green glue. I don't use green glue and he's all about it because well, that's how he makes his money. So just know that. Um, so STC ratings are actually only a partial picture of how well a wall soundproofs. The problem is an effective soundproofing system will perform below the 125 hertz STC frequency cutoff. This means that in our national certified labs that these uh, assemblies are tested in, the STC cutoff rating is 
125 hertz, which is pretty high when you think about a lot of the bass frequencies are below 125 hertz. So if you are trying to compare wall assemblies and they roughly have the same SDC rating, um, but they could have more mass on one wall versus the other, and having more mass on your walls will actually give you better low end control, meaning below 125 hertz, but that may not actually show up on the STC charts. So check this out. If we go down here, we can see that uh, these two STC walls uh, have both have a problem in the low end below 125 hertz with this dip right here. So this STC of 42 wall actually is technically better, but because it happens below the 125 hertz cutoff, the STC 32 wall actually looks like it performs much worse when in fact they both have this problem frequency down low. It's just that the rating system cuts this off in the STC 42 wall. So that just gives you a real world example of how this is not a very accurate way of understanding sound isolation uh, for anything below 125 hertz. Now if we look at this website here, which is from IP Acoustics, uh, ISP Acoustics, sorry, uh, they have something here which says perceptibility of STC differences. While it may seem that a higher STC rating indicates better sound isolation, minor differences between scores are often imperceptible in real world scenarios. Research indicates that a difference of five points is generally required for a noticeable change in sound perception. For example, an STC rating of 31 may not be significantly different from a rating of 33 in practical applications. Therefore, when comparing products, it's essential to focus on the larger differences in performance rather than getting caught up in the small numerical variances. Case in point, when we go back over here and we see an STC rating of 50 versus an STC rating of 52, we know there is no real perceptible uh, difference from what we hear as human beings between the 50 STC rating and the 52 STC rating. For all int intensive purposes, they could be considered roughly the same STC rating. Now, let's go over here and look at this article by John Manville, who is another uh, insulation supplier. They do supply both mineral roll and uh, fiberglass insulation, so they're not really partial to one or the other. They're just kind of explaining uh, the difference. And remember, rock wool is just another form of mineral wool insulation made by rock, mineral wool. Mineral wool is the name for that. So the thing that's interesting here is the thermal performance is definitely better with um, mineral Mineral wool. So rock wool will perform better from a thermal perspective, uh, and rock wool will also be much better from a fire safety perspective. So I'm not even going to argue that. It is a superior product in those regards. However, when it comes to sound control, in terms of acoustics, mineral wool has marginally better sound control properties. However, the difference in acoustical performance is so minimal that humans would not be able to distinguish a difference between the two materials in a wall cavity. Both fiberglass and mineral can be used in a variety of assemblies to meet specific sound transmission class requirements. So they are saying, as you have seen from other manufacturers and other websites in the field, that these marginal differences are not perceptible. Here's another example of what John Manville put out here in this graph situation here. So we can see that with a single layer of drywall, the mineral wool performs better by one STC point versus the fiberglass. With two layers of drywall, uh, they're the same. And then with a single layer of drywall uh, in single framing 24 inches on center, there's a one inch, uh, one STC difference. And then with a double stud wall, meaning two, like that double stud thing I showed you at the very beginning, um, they both get an STC rating of 53. So not really a difference there either. And this is just more test data um, from another a company here. So then if we look over here, um, this is also by the soundproofing company, and he specifically states here in this article, what type of insulation do you recommend? Uh, otherwise, I'd suggest getting the least expensive fiberglass insulation. Fiberglass tests best in the lowest frequencies, and at the end of the day, the low frequencies are generally all that remain as audible. I would recommend fiberglass over mineral wool insulation. Mineral wool has a fire rating, however, and can be used as a fire stop instead of rigid drywall. So that is actually true, and I use mineral wool as a fire stop in my designs. Um, and I use mineral wool as a form of acoustic absorption 
inside of rooms. However, I prefer Knopf Ecos insulation because I think it's a better product overall. So there's a lot of nuance here, and this is why just flat out saying Rockwell Safe and Sound is better than other insulations is not correct. Now, this is Russ Berger Design Group. Um, he's another uh, studio designer, another respected designer in the field. And I wanted to point out this in his uh, myth exposing acoustic myths blog, and I think this is a really important point. The transmission loss through a partition is affected by the mass of the materials used, the thickness and assembly of the barrier, and controlling of flanking and substructure borne paths. Absorption within the rooms on either side of the partition is a relatively minor issue. For sound isolation, there is no substitute, again, there is no substitute for heavy, airtight construction regardless of how you finish it. So this means that the insulation, the idea that fluffy insulation in our walls is the most important part is a myth and a fallacy. The most important part is the whole system as a whole. It is, if I bring back this picture right here, if we go back to this STC 63 party wall, the way the reason this wall works is not because of the insulation choice in the middle of the wall. That is actually irrelevant as long as it is a fluffy porous absorption not a thick rigid one and the most important thing is the fact that we have two layers of drywall equal equaling mass on both walls we have a large air gap between the drywall layers and we have some insulation you know absorbing the resonances between the drywall and most importantly we have an air gap so that the two walls are not acoustically coupled together. And that is what truly makes a high soundproof, high STC 63 wall work. Now, I want to now talk about really what we're talking about was the idea of cost. So now that I've hopefully proved this point that there's no significant difference in isolation between mineral wool, or in this case, rock wool, safe and sound, and other types of fluffy fiberglass insulation on the market, let's look at the impact to your wallet. So if we look right now, this is at Lowe's, uh, it's a rock wool safe and sound um, bat, and it comes in at $79.98 per pack. Now it is 59.7 square feet. So if we do the math, which I've done right here, um, it comes out to $1.34 per square foot. So remember that number, $1.34 per square foot is what you're spending on rock wool safe and sound. Now, if we go to the Home Depot and we can get these, you know, typical R13 unfaced insulation bats, don't look at this $888 because that covers a lot more square footage. Here is the cost per square foot there. It's 83 cents per square foot. So we're talking about a huge difference in relative price between the two products. Uh, when we go back to the idea that the difference in sound isolation is negligible between the two products, I tend to tell my clients, hey, if you want to find a place to save, you know, a couple hundred dollars up to a thousands of dollars, depending on the size of your space and how much insulation you're using, this is a great place to save money. I would take that money and instead invest it into more layers of drywall or other parts of your project where that money could be better used, such as in buying a better soundproof door uh, rather than just buying more expensive insulation. So I hope this video helped to break down the myth around why this idea that rock wool safe and sound is going to help you out. Um, I do want to say that, you know, for those of you using a typical wall, if you're going to go from no insulation to having insulation, yes, it's going to be a huge difference in the quality of the uh, difference. If you're going to go from like an old insulation that's been in there for a long time and may have settled and created air pockets, that's also going to be better if you use Rockwell Safe and Sound to replace it. However, using something like Owens Corning pink insulation will have typically the same effect as rock wool safe and sound according to all this research that I've done. So save your money in the future. Don't fall prey to uh, sort of a lot of the group think on the internet that says that you have to use rock wool safe and sound. And most importantly, when you see the little baby, baby sleeping on the package there, just know that you're being duped by incredibly good marketing at the rock wool company. And I, 
hats off to them for excellent marketing. As a business owner myself, I respect that. But I also am really one who wants to make sure that my clients and all of you out there are saving your money and using it where it is needed most. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood, and I am a professional studio designer based in Nashville, Tennessee. I design soundproof spaces all over the world, and I want to help you guys out. So if you've stuck around this long, I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly everything that I know about building recording studios or soundproof rooms, soundproof offices, and I want you to learn how to do that as well. To check it out, you can just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop and watch it right away. I also want to say that if some of you are out there and are interested in potentially working with me and our design firm in designing a custom space for you, and you want full construction plans uh, and someone on your team to show you how to do that, uh, then you are a great candidate for my free soundproof clarity call. You can just go to soundproofyourstudio.com, click on the I want full construction plans button, and you can sign up for a soundproof clarity call with me, a free 30 minute Zoom call with me, and I'd be happy to learn more about your project and see how I may be able to help you. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Every week I have new videos on soundproofing and room acoustics to help you you understand how to design and build your own soundproof space like a pro. All right, I'll see you all next week.